Welcome to the Planet of Maths channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about the powers of a negative whole number exponent. We have a formula that will be useful, and we have the first four examples to do. When the exponent is negative, according to our formula, we need to draw a fraction bar. And at the top, we see the number 1, and in the denominator, we write a to the power of n. That is what we had here, but without the minus. Well, in our case, it is a 7 to the first power. And this is simply 1 seventh. In example b, we have 12 to the power of negative 1. We also draw a fraction line. At the top, we put our number 1. And in the denominator, we put 12 to the first power. It's what was here, but without the minus. And we get the result, which is 1 twelfth. In example c, it will be similar. We have 4 to the power of negative 2, so we also draw a fraction bar. According to the formula, at the top, we put 1, and at the bottom, we put what was here, but without the minus, so it will be 4 to the second power. And here, we still need to calculate 4 squared, which is 16. In example d, we also draw a fraction bar. In the numerator, we put 1, and in the denominator, we put 5 to the power of 3 which is what we had here, but without the minus. 5 to the power of 3 is 5 times 5, which is 25, and another times 5 gives the result 125. And all this was very cool until fractions appeared. In the case of fractions, this method I showed earlier is not entirely good. For fractions, the second method is good. Now I'll show you this second method. This minus sign, it will work in such a way that in the case of a fraction, it will invert the fraction upside down. So if I have to raise a fraction two-thirds to a negative power here, it becomes the inverse fraction, meaning three-halves. And I will be raising this fraction to the power, now without the minus, so to the power of three. The minus is gone, but it flipped the fraction upside down. Now we're raising three-halves to the third power. That will be 27. Because three to the third power is exactly 27. In the denominator case, it will be two cubed. That is eight. So we could also extract holes. There are three holes here. Three times eight is 24. So to 27, we still need the number three. In the example f, we again have a fraction. So we'll use the method with inverting the fraction again, because here we have a minus. We invert the fraction. Instead of 5 fourths, we get 4 fifths. And that will be raised to the second power. We pay attention to the fact that the minus, which was in the bracket, is there. It needs to be copied. We're raising the negative fraction 4 fifths to the power of 2. It's clear now that we'll get a positive result, because we have a minus times a minus, so the outcome will be positive. 4 times 4 equals 16 in the numerator, and 5 times 5 equals 25 in the denominator. In example g, we also have a fraction, so we'll proceed similarly to examples e and i. But here, you can't immediately do the inverse, because there are holes, so you first have to deal with these holes. We need to convert this to an improper fraction. The 2 will be at the bottom, and at the top, we have 1 times 2, which is 2, plus 1, which is 3. So here we have 3 halves, and raised to the power of minus 4. So far, this minus hasn't worked at all. It works now. The minus acts and flips the fraction upside down. It becomes 2 thirds, and we raise these 2 thirds to the fourth power without this minus. The minus has done its job and disappeared. And now to the fourth power. 2 to the 4th power equals 16. 3 to the power of 4 gives us a result of 81. I'll return to those first four examples, because those examples can also be done using the method of inverting the fraction, but you have to make the fraction first, because 7 holes are actually 7 over 1. So if I convert 7 holes into 7 firsts, then this minus will flip the fraction upside down for me, and it becomes 1 seventh. I have to raise this 1 seventh to the first power, which is simply 1 seventh. 12 to the minus first power is the same. 12 is otherwise 12 ones. If I reverse it, it becomes 1 twelfth. 1 twelfth to the power of 1, which is simply 1 twelfth. Here too, four holes are four firsts. So flipping the fraction of four firsts, it becomes a fraction of 1 fourth. And that would need to be raised to the second power. 1 quarter times 1 quarter gives the result 1 sixteenth. 5 to the power of minus 3 I can also add a 1 at the bottom here, making it 1 fifth. This minus inverts the fraction, turning 5 firsts into 1 fifth. And we raise this fraction to the third power. After multiplying 1 fifth by 1 fifth by 1 fifth, we get the result 1 over 125. 
So as you can see, whether by this method or that method, we get the same result. It would be good to know both methods because each has its advantages. The method with inverting the fraction is good for fractions, when we count fractions. However, this method is much better. If we don't have fractions, we have whole numbers, then it works faster here. Getting the result is faster, and this method proves more useful in subsequent math sections, for example in logarithms, so it would be good to know both methods. And here we still have two examples to do. We have decimal fractions this time, but they are still fractions, so we'll mostly use the inversion method. But first we have to convert it to a proper fraction. 2.5 is 2 whole and 1 half. But then, we can't let that minus affect us, we need to convert it to an improper fraction. From this we get 2 times 2 is 4 and 1 is 5. So we have 5 halves, to the power of minus 3. Now, since this is a fraction, this minus flips the fraction upside down for us, making it a fraction of 2 fifths. And now we raise it to the third power, to a positive power, and 2 fifths times 2 fifths times 2 fifths is like this. From the multiplication of 2's, we get 8. And from multiplication of 5's, we get 125. This is the result, for example, h. Now example, i. Again, we have a decimal fraction, so we convert it into a common fraction. We keep copying this minus sign. Minus 0 0.4 equals minus 4 over 10. Then we raise it to the power of negative 2. Before we start working on it, it would be good to simplify this fraction. When we reduce it by 2, we end up with 2 fifths here. And this is to the power of negative 2. Now, this minus sign comes into play and flips our fraction upside down. Here we get negative 5 halves to the power of 2. From this, we get a positive result since negative times negative equals positive. On the top, we'll have 25. At the bottom, we'll have 4. And if we turn off the holes, there are 6 holes. There will be 4 on the bottom. 6 times 4 is 24. So there's a 1 missing here. We have 6 whole and 1 quarter. And I want to show here that if we have powers with a negative exponent, the same rules that apply to all powers still apply. Here we have multiplication of powers with the same base 3. As a result, we will definitely get the number 3, because 3 repeats. And what should we do with the exponents? Well, these exponents should be added. We have to add both exponents, and the first exponent is the negative 2. And the second exponent is negative 3. So, negative 2 plus negative 3 gives us negative 5 from this. And here we apply the first method. We put 1 at the top, and at the bottom we put 3 to the fifth power. Because here we didn't have a fraction. We had an integer. 3 times 3 equals 9. 9 times 3 equals 27. 27 times 3 equals 81. And 81 times 3 equals 243. And the last example from this video, dividing powers with the same base, so what about the exponents? When multiplying, exponents were added. When dividing, exponents will be subtracted. So we need to subtract these two exponents. The exponent negative 4 and negative 2. Actually, if we drop the parentheses here, it will be minus 4 plus 2. Here we have to be careful and watch out for the signs. From these two minuses, we get a plus. So we end up with a result 8. Not to the power of minus 6, but to the power of minus 2 because minus 4 plus 2 results in minus 2. And we're calculating this quickly now, because we already know how. At the top, there is number 1. And at the bottom, what was here, but now without the minus. That gives us a result of 64. And that's all for this video. Thank you for watching, and I invite you to tune in for the next episodes on the Planet of Mass channel.